the, this first room, uh, you know, in this atmosphere, and a few first of the kind of last weeks before the Jewish town. This is a Jewish quarter over here, Kazimierz, yeah? So this is a river, Vistula. I believe majority of you have crossed the river now. In fact, it's extremely hot, very nice weather. And so people were in a difficult situation in Europe, yeah? It's really after the civil war. So we went for a vacation from Polish, you know, operetta generals. They had very nice uniforms, and they loved their uniforms. Yeah, but then they were saying, you know, our country is strong, the army is undefeatable. Well, it was like a wishful wish. You know, the first days of September really showed that uh, Polish government, uh, Polish army was rather underdeveloped in comparison to the German army. The German army had a huge advantage. You know, in one of the rooms ahead of us is going to be an interactive map of the invasion, so you will see how fast the German army was occupying. But this is still the time of peace, and the next room is going to be dedicated to the last day of peace. 31st of August, 1939. The last day of this miracle that September the 1st, usually all the kids go back to school, parents go back to work. But, uh, you know, uh, then those latecomers, you know, heading back home, you know, at that time, trains were the main means of transportation. Yeah, Oshinchi in Polish. Yeah, maybe some of you be German. But the territory of central Poland, the Germans created a colony. Germans, it was a daily reminder of their defeat. Yes, therefore, it was the first monument they blew up that night. Yeah, so, uh, but the monument today is back. So this guy was kind of brave enough. Uh, yeah, this So uh, about 200 professors turned up uh, later. Uh, plus, it was a uh, well cross the official symbol of the Nazi regime. I uh, shocking, controversial. Yes, yeah, so you see so many of them. It's not original, it's made especially for the museum. Uh, well, uh, I talked to people who wrote the scenario for this exhibition, yeah, historians, uh, museum specialists. They said we decided to show it because we're talking about the Nazi occupation. But they said we decided to put it on the floor. We we'll walk on it. We we'll step on it. It's a sign of evil. Yeah. Hans Frank. Yeah. Look at the highest point of his career. He became governor general of Occupy the Nazi. He was walking like this. So the anniversary was marked with a review, and uh, it was marked with a special event. The name of the square was changed to Adolf Hitler Platz. So in the city center for five years, with the square named after Führer. Yeah, so and uh, it was marked with all this overexcited, you know, uniformed men. Yeah, so, uh, and uh, it's a short, it goes round and round, it's about a minute. Yeah, but Market Square still looks pretty much uh, the same. And this is, for example, Zara shop today. Oh, wow. It's a motorcyclist, yeah. Again, Frank again, yeah. And this building behind the walking soldiers, McDonald's today. If you remember McDonald's on the main market square, this is the building. So, still the same place. <laughs> Cells? Yeah. yeah. It's another. Oh, it's another. It's another. It, it, this prison is still like functioning. It's a huge oh, prison. It's, a, it's a still a huge prison. Uh, but this is a list of hostages. Yeah, Germans were taking hostages. You know, if there is act of mutiny, sabotage, revolt, yeah, resistance, and if Germans die, in this case, prisoners were executed. Uh, uh, prison cells. Yeah, they talk about different aspects of terror.
Tycoon, yeah, a millionaire. He was a, an important. Newspapers in Krakow were published in two languages, in uh, German and in Polish. The main German newspaper was called uh, Krakauer Zeitung. Salt mines, yeah, near Krakow. Yeah. This is the river Vistula, which goes all the way north, and it's Warsaw on the way, yeah. It's 300 kilometers between Krakow and uh, Warsaw. Uh, if you look 300 kilometers east, yeah, there is a place called Lenbeck. Today, this is the biggest city of Western Ukraine, Lviv. So when you read news about Ukraine, Lviv is very often mentioned because it's a major city in the western part of the country. It's a big railway hub. It's a, the major place for refugees out of Ukraine and uh, all the logistics to Ukraine usually goes, you know, via Poland and uh, via Lviv. It means today we have the border here, roughly. This is Ukraine and uh, this is Poland. And uh, this is a territory, this is general government, yeah, it's written here in German, which was uh, controlled by Hans. Yeah, and we can also... Inside, you can get closer here so we can leave a passage in the middle if uh, there are some individual visitors. Yeah, please come over here. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, you see, it was a quite a place. It was a graveyard. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just realize what's going to happen to them. Uh, well, if you work, you are not paid, you are fed by your employer at least once a day. You get like a a hot mill, yeah, so uh, if you work outside the ghetto, it was even better. <laughs> yes, became something like a last resort. Thanks to him, a few people managed to survive. He couldn't like well, Oscar Oscar should. Should. News. Yeah, from outside the ghetto. He was free to move in and out. So the map is original, and thanks to this map, we know here was the Schindler's office. When, uh, yeah, so um, Schindler himself was uh, German, but he wasn't from Germany. He was from Czechoslovakia. He was Sudetenland German. So he was born in, uh, in Czechoslovakia, in army, in national service. <coughs> Uh, in 1933, in neighboring Germany, yeah, this pre-war Jewish business, uh, he was using Polish on the Jewish labor, and uh, so every day had to come from the camp, guarded, and every night back. At the end of the war, thanks to his connections, uh, networking, friends, tribes, he was able to open a sub camp inside the factory. So his factory became kind of a, a labor camp. So barracks were at the back. And uh, so about 1,200 Jewish workers. So at the end of the war, he managed to evacuate the factory from here to uh, Moravia, northern Czech, today it's northern Czech Republic.
it's two letters in it. It's the so-called the resistance uh, anchor. P stands for the name of the country, Polska, Pol, and the letter W at the bottom stands for the Polish word Balcic, to fight. So, Poland in fight, yeah? So, these are the soldiers of the resistance, yeah? So, uh, but resisted, it was only kind of like uh, armed resistance. It was a functioning underground state. Uh, righteous 